Hey, you United Kingdomonians. You blokes and blokettes. This is Rory. And Maul. And we are coming to London's Earth Theater November 5th, Rory. Yes. First time across the pond for me. I'm excited. Uh, yes, I'm excited too. For, not first time across the pond. First time going across the pond and people were actually waiting to see me. Yes. First time with a work visa. Yes. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> we will be at the Earth Theater November 5th in London. Looking forward to it. Hope to see you all soon. Get your tickets now. If not, it's going to be a fucking piss fest when we get there. We're going nuts. <laughs> <laughs> no worry, and not. Uh, welcome to a new episode of the new Rory and Maul podcast. I am Maul. I'm Rory. And uh, we are back with a new episode uh, for the week. Um, since the last time we spoke, uh, once again, we've had a uh, tragic monumental loss in uh, in the hip hop culture, hip hop community. Um, sadly, uh, take off uh, one of the members of the Migos. I'm, I'm pretty sure everybody's heard by now. Was uh was killed in Houston. Um, again another tragedy. Only twenty eight years old. Uh, super talented. Uh, this this was one of the one of those ones, Rory, that completely, completely just. I don't know if it's because I'm getting older, and I just like feel things more. Mm -hmm. But uh, this this one really really bothered me to wake up, and uh, receive the news that uh takeoff was killed. Um. You know, and it's 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 beyond sad. It's it's deeper than a sadness. It's um it's scary. It's uh it's frightening. It's a it's a eerie eerie energy. It's a it's a very dark energy that seems to be hovering and entrenched in our culture that was once a beautiful, beautiful thing and, and you know, for the most part still is we, it's it's time for a, a different conversation. It's time for different uh, change. It's it's something has to happen immediately. Something has to change immediately. Um, because this is this is beyond beyond you know what we can even like you know comprehend. This is um, it's almost like you don't you don't you don't know what's going on. You don't know what's next. And and I know, you know, people say, oh, you know, it's, you know, the, the lyrics and the energy that we live with and that we walk around with and, you know, streets, we, we mix, mix the streets with the, the art and the, and the culture and whatever it is, something needs to change and something needs to happen now because you don't know, you know, it's almost like you sit around and you, you support these artists and you know you become fans of these artists and you wake up and they're gone and you know in a, in a tragic way and it's you know i don't even understand i, I can't even understand i i'm, I'm old, old enough to remember what it felt like to wake up and find out that biggie was killed and you know i'm, I'm old enough to remember what it felt like hearing when tupac passed away and I remember that feeling, and and the feeling now is almost something that's um. We don't have to sugarcoat it. It's normal. It's fucking normal. Yeah, and it's it's I, it's it's like I don't I don't understand how we got here. I don't understand, you know, how we let it get to this. Um, you know, uh, take take off wasn't his energy wasn't negative. His um, his message wasn't negative. I know people will find lyrics and stuff to pick apart the Migos and say, oh, they God. was talking street stuff and, you know, guns and this, that, and the third. But, you know, it, it still wasn't a negative energy that you got from takeoff and just seeing the interviews and and and, and things like that. Um, or even the situations that we we saw publicly that he would even be put in. Yeah. It's not like he was out there putting himself in negative situations on a regular basis that we've seen right. with not just rappers, just people in general. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we were together when, when Nipsey had passed and I feel like so much of the energy when that was happening was nah, no fucking way. No way. No way. When that hit the group chat, whatever, six o'clock in the morning, I didn't have a no way feeling. I had a fuck. There was no like denial in it, but because it's become so fucking regular mm -hmm. and a, and a name like, take off and the superstars that the Migos are I felt like I should have been like nah there's no way that could have happened 
Right. I read that message and said, fuck. Yeah, there, it, it, it wasn't that that doubt that I've had with so many of these situations. Like, nah, come on. You know how the internet be doing shit. Mm -hmm. I really looked at that and was like, fuck. Fuck. Yeah, it's right. it's whenever my phone rings at a certain time in the morning, like cons consecutively, mm. I, you know, I already know. I'm like, all right, let me answer. This is the third time my phone rang in the last 10 minutes and it's not even 9 a.m. yet. Yeah. And it's like something ain't right. And then I pick up my phone and my homeboy tells me what happened. And I'm like, no, nah, I don't believe that. I, I just I didn't believe it. I hung up and went back to sleep. I was like, that's probably just some internet, you know, Bullshit, something yeah. happened last night. They probably was out partying and somebody yeah. got shot and they just saying that and he probably was there or, mm -hmm. you know, him and Quavo were probably there, but, and, you know, got up and, 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 and really started like, you know, checking my text messages and, and making some calls and then, you know, f found out at that time it was confirmed that it was true. It's, you know, uh, it's, it's just it's 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 beyond tragic, man. Because you know these are young, twenty eight years old. My age, right? It you know, Pac was twenty five, twenty six. Big was twenty. It's it's tragic. It's like you know, how, is this? How long does this cycle last? How mm -hmm. long does this go on? And and now you know we wake up and it's like we just lost PNB Rock. What? A month ago, a month if ago, that, maybe yeah. if that. It's it's you know I, it's probably some guys that we lost in between that that time. Sure. I'm not I can't remember not because and that's the problem. It's like it's it happens so often that you forget some people that we lost and you know and, and mm. in the mix of it. It's I don't know what you know. It's something has to change. Something has to change, man. Something has to happen. You know, and and I and I get it. People say it's the music, it's the lyrics, and words are spells, and words have meaning, and the energy you put out, you get back. I understand, and you know, I I agree with those things to an extent. But it still shouldn't be in our culture where it's, it's like this. You know, uh, actors playing movies where they're shooting things up and they're saying things, and it doesn't happen to them. You know, actors aren't gunned down. Um, you know, so it's something that we're doing. Like, and we have to, I think it starts with accountability. It, it starts, we have to start somewhere, right? So let's start with taking accountability. What are we doing now? And what have we been doing that we can stop doing to change this? You know, is it the guns? Is it is it everybody, you know, being in these? And it's reported that this was a private party. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's a lot of, a lot of. I don't want to get into that because there's a lot of stories floating around and people saying they was there and yes, everybody was searched except for it's too certain early. people. Yeah, so it's it's like, I don't want to get that. into all yeah. of that. But and I understand having security. And I understand that you know you you having guys around you that are around you to protect you. So guns are around because you know a lot of these you know a lot of these artists they walk around with so much jewelry on them. You know sometimes millions millions of dollars in jewelry at a time. So you got to have people around them to protect them. But let's start there. Like, why Why do we, one, feel like we have to walk around with all of this jury on, right? Because we back to this with the whole PNB thing. Mm -hmm. PNB was robbed for his jury, ultimately killed. Um, Why do we feel like we have to walk around with so much money, flaunting so much money, cash, Around people that you know aren't can't afford these things, you know, uh, aren't doing as well as you are in life, and we put ourselves in these in these areas and in these situations where we become a plate to an extent mm -hmm. for for guys that are hungry. Um, not saying that this was the case here, but you know, just kind of talking about everything in the in in our community. Like, what are we doing that we have to change? Because it's something. It's something. We we have to change this. Nobody's gonna you know swoop in and save the day, and and all of this is gonna go away. We have to be the ones to change how we move, how we how we how we act. You know the things that we we say to each other, the energy that we walk around with, the egos. It has to start with us. We I, I'm we have to take accountability because again, nobody is coming to save us. We have to save ourselves. We have to change ourselves, and we have to start moving different, start talking to each other different, start, you know, just a different energy because something is completely 
wrong with this frequency. Something is is deadly wrong with this. This is not how it's supposed to go. These guys are talented. They're making a way for their families. They're, you know, employing their friends, generating millions and millions of dollars, creating art, traveling the world, bringing people together to enjoy music and enjoy this this culture that we love called hip hop and then dying because of this culture called hip hop. Like, it just doesn't make sense to me. Like, it doesn't, you know, it doesn't make, like, we don't see, you know, other cultures and art forms dying like this. We don't see country That's not artists dying from this. Country. We don't see gospel yeah. artists dying like this. We don't see, you know, whatever other cultures out there, we don't see them dying at this rate. The artists from those cultures dying at this rate so young um, from the hands of gun violence. It's, it's, it, there's something we we have to take accountability. We have to take accountability because we can say we want change. This has to stop. We could yell this every time this happens, but the truth of the matter is it's not going to stop unless we turn it off and we make it stop and we change what we're doing. We change how we move. We change how we, you know, speak to each other. This has to, I don't know. I don't know where it turned and where, you know, became so deadly, but like you said, Rory, this is almost normal. It's, like we, we was just talking normal. early and it's like, at this rate, who's next? Like you, you, you start to have that feeling like, yo, like who's next? Yeah. It, it felt like rinse and repeat on Instagram again. And I I was thinking the past 48 hours since it happened, like, you know, you have to think about the podcast and and, and what you're going to say publicly. And and I have nothing profound to say at this point. I have to have no solution for anything. I feel like anytime we get in these situations, it's like, oh, all right, why was dude there? His homie should have been there. All right, well, it looks like in this situation, it was the homies that did it. It looks like jewelry had nothing to do with it this time. Every single time we go through this, there's some way we're like, PMB shouldn't have been over there. Or, okay, they weren't even in the hood. They were at a bowling alley. Okay, yo, how come you don't have security? Okay, it's reports of security were the ones that were around. At what point, every angle we go through, yeah. someone still dies. Because mm-hmm. every situation we find, whether it be on the internet, just talking with, with your friends, oh, well, he sh- shouldn't have done this. Shouldn't have, yo, you got to move this way. You got to move this way. But in every situation... Trouble was just in, a, in in his crib or in Shorty's crib. Home invasion. Like yeah. any situation you're put in, even if you move the way the other person didn't move, it feels like people are dying. Yeah. So that's, I like, I have no solution. I have no fucking idea, nor do I even know if it's my place to even talk about it. I just don't know what to do at that point. And you could do everything right. <laughs> Every last thing right. And still it can happen. Yeah. It's, um... Well, you know, let, let's slow down first. First of all, prayers and condolences to the family of Kirshnick Kari Ball. Yes, known to, known professionally as Takeoff. Um, you know, prayers to Quavo. Prayers to Offset. Um, it's just, it's just sad, man. And and like I said, I don't know if it's because I'm getting older. Like these things really hit me differently the older I get. Um, I never met Takeoff, but it still didn't stop, you know, hearing the news, it still didn't stop it from affecting me and, and bothering me and hurting me and, you know, getting choked up and, you know, even, even, even crying, you know what I mean? Only because it's like 28 years old, you know, I think about when I was 28 and, you know, any, any time, you know, I see somebody from our culture died from gun violence. You know, I lost a brother from gun violence. So that it, 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 it opens that wound again for me. And I know what the family is feeling. You know, it's, it's, and it's like, again, these are our, the guys that we listen to to entertain us and, you know, get us in a, a good mood when we're going, you know, to party or going to, to, to work out or just being around family and friends. And, you know, and it's like to see, see a young, a young a young man go like this especially when it it looks and seems like it wasn't meant for him um it's it's just a tragedy this is some this is a tragic a tragic a tragic situation man and this 
it's sad, man, and it, and it hurts. It's um, it's gonna hurt for a while because um, again, you just never got a negative energy or negative vibe from takeoff. No, not at all. Very soft spoken, very mild mannered. It looked like he minded his business all the time. Yeah, and it, it <laughs> yeah. just, you know, from what I know, like I said, I never met him, but just yeah. just from the outside looking in, very mild mannered, very laid back. Uh, you know, and it just it appears since we talk about when sometimes this happens, oh, look at the energy that was put out that you had brought up. Yeah. It appeared the energy that he put out is if you have a problem with takeoff, there's a you're the problem. Yeah. <laughs> it's like he doesn't look like he bothers nobody. Yeah. He minds his business. He chills, he makes his music, and keeps it pushing. Mm -hmm. That's the energy that I felt he had been giving off for the past decade. And I don't know if it's just like the Irish funeral in me. Every single time someone does pass, I'm like, oh, let's try to celebrate them and focus on their life rather than their death and, and everything. It, we, it, we it, made me, it made me more sad. Look, look what this kid, this kid, he's 28 yeah. years old. That's still a kid. I know the internet gets mad when we say kid. That's still a kid. At the end of the day, mm. I think someone in their twenties is still a kid. Look what he has accomplished. He, the Migos changed hip hop. Absolutely. This is a this is a staple in rap history, forever. Mm. They changed how any flow is even sure. presented. Right, like right. this is not just like just another would quote unquote rapper pass. Like this was an a living icon at the time. We have talked about the Migos already solidifying their space in hip-hop history mm -hmm. 28 years old mm -hmm. i got more pissed off when i'm thinking to myself oh look at all the great shit he accomplished he was 28 how much more shit he could have done yeah and that's what it is it's like his story ends here like that's it and you know it's you, ch you changed a genre that's the number one genre in the world at 20 what three maybe is when migos younger than that 2013 yeah so he was 20 19 had changed how we how we even go about this artistry, and it stops at twenty eight. Yeah, it's it's um, it's sad, man, and 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 it hurts. Like I said, uh, you know, I I really this really bothered me, really hurt me, because it was just it just it it, it although it it has you know, and it's 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 sad to say that it has become such a normal feeling. To feel like you wake up and you get this news about, you know, an artist from our culture passing due to gun violence and things like that, it still it still hurts though. You know what I mean? It still hurts just to, you know, one minute you with your friends and family having a good time, and then moments later you're just gone. And you know that's, I can never get used to that. Um, I will never get used to that. And um, you know, just be somebody that is old enough to remember, you know, what hip hop felt like in the nineties. And, you know, it's the feeling now is something totally different. It seems like it's just, it's just, a, it's a totally different feeling around hip hop and rap. It's, it's just, it's a total different energy. It's a total. And again, calling me getting older. I, I, I agree when I hear a lot of people sit down and talk about this same thing. I agree that it is the music. I agree that it is, you know, the lyrics, it is the the energy because it's just a different, it's a whole different thing now with this, with this music. It's, it's you know, it's just like, I, I don't, I can't explain it. And, you know, on one hand, it's frustrating because I'm happy that a lot of these young kids and, you know, these guys find a way to create and, you know, make money legally and support their families and, you know, make a better way for themselves. But at what cost? Like your life? You know what I mean? Like, I just can't, I don't, I, I can't make that deal. You know, I'm not going to, I don't, I'd rather, you know, these young guys get a job, go to school and, you know, not be celebrities and not make all this money if it means, yo, know, you're going to be gone before you're 30 because of the music you're making and the energy that you're moving around with and, you know, the situations that you're putting yourself in. I, I'd rather just see these young, young cats just find another way if it means that we're going to keep losing these guys so like I just can't I can't I can't I can't support that and it's hard wait, wait. because I, on one hand like I said I love the fact that these young dudes found a way and are creating their own way and expressing themselves and, and able to you know monetize that and, and support themselves and support that I love that 
but not at the cost of your life, though. Not at the cost of us waking up and getting the news that, you know, somebody was killed and somebody was, you know, it's I I just can't make that trade. And I, I feel you. Uh, we, we've all been critical of, of certain type of drill music, certain social media beefs that are not social media. Mm-hmm. I think this is what probably fucked me up even more about this takeoff thing is what did he do wrong? He mm-hmm. does he doesn't do the op music. Mm-hmm. Uh you could we've seen so many rappers unfortunately die in their hood. It's not mm-hmm. like he was back hanging on his corner when he was a superstar and shouldn't have been doing it. Cause I've seen people be critical of rappers doing that. Mm-hmm. But even he was that, with he was that. with he was with the people. And I, I, I'm not going to get into any politics shit or nothing, but let's just go through the checklist of what social media does every time a rapper dies. He wasn't doing the, the op back and forth shit on his songs. He checked in with the people that he was supposed to check in with in the city that he was in. He was with them. He was not back in his neighborhood hanging with the people he probably shouldn't be hanging with. And he, this was not over jewelry. Right. He he was not just talking shit, yo. Look at me, what type of shit? He what did this guy do wrong? But even see, because I feel I you, everything that, that you though. said, I agree. I, that things need to change. It just hurts me so much that I don't think he did anything wrong. But but see, I go deeper than that. Why we got to check in with somebody? Uh, I, more, I'm a civilian. I, I'm not gonna really no, get I'm, into that. No, but I'm we can just, have the conversation. I'm just asking, like, why? Yeah. Why if I'm an entertainer, right? If I'm an entertainer, you know, why do I have to? And it's just right. Like Kobe ain't have to check in with the streets when he came to the garden to play basketball. Different culture, but yeah, I see what you're saying. It's I basketball. That's part of the culture. That's what that's from the streets. Yeah, but it's it, I like again. Like, I'm probably not the person that should be talking about it, but it's definitely viewed differently. But that's my point. Why is it just rap? Why is it just and hip-hop? and on top of that, I feel like. There are basketball players that if you want to go out in certain nightlife or certain spots, you do got to check in to some degree. But to why? go play at the Garden, no. But no, but why? That's a, see, we got to get to that. Why does, oh, the why I can't answer. Why but. does a grown man that's making an, a living, getting paid, entertaining people, entertaining people, creating music, creating art, mm. performing somewhere, bringing people together to have a good time, listen to music, dance, uh, you know, whatever. Why does that person have to like, why does that person have to check in? Like, and that's only in our culture. Yeah. Um, Garth Brooks ain't got to check in with nobody when he go to Nashville or he go to wherever, California. He ain't got to check in with nobody to, when he get to the city. Well, let me, why is it just, why is it just in hip hop? Why is it just in our culture? Like who made that? When did that become like, yo, you got to check in? Like for what? But let, let me ask I'm here you this, to entertain the people. This this question. Do you want to move as far as what reality is or what it should be? Because do I think PMB Rock should be able to walk in to a restaurant with a jewelry on? Of course I think he should. But I do know the reality of the world. And it doesn't work it. that way. I do I it. do I think but somebody should be able to just to. go to a city and perform, make their money, and be out safely? Of course, but I do know. The little bit that I know, that can't yeah, but happen that's, sometimes. Yeah, but that's what that's what we see. Th- those are the conversations that we got to sit down and have. We'll sit down and talk about everything else, except for the shit that's that doesn't make sense. Like, why does an entertainer that's coming here to entertain and and make people feel good and 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 and, and, and you know perform music and bring people together for a good time? Why does that person have to check in and all this other shit like? Like why? Like mm. I'm not here to, you know, harm nobody. I'm not here to take from nobody. I'm not here to disrespect nobody. Like so, I just don't understand when that. It's like why do we put we put shit in the culture that completely has changed the culture? Like we put little little things in the pot, and it's like now it's a whole different thing, though. Like why does that? We gotta have those conversations, like. Because to me, that's that's it. Really boils down to it's it almost almost an ego thing. It's like ego, yo, check in, do this, do that, and it's like, bro, do we talking about grown men here though? Like, mm. you understand what I'm saying? Like, I feel you. Like, why? 
I'm here to entertain, bro. I'm not here to disrespect nobody. I'm not here to, you know, take nothing from the community. You know, these are people that support me. Obviously, is why I'm here. They want to see me. They they they, they want to, you know, come out, have a good time. I just don't understand when it became that. It, 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 we started putting that in the pot. And that's what I'm saying is we got we to gotta look at, again, accountability. accountability. We got to look at the things that we've done to the culture and the art that have turned it into something deadly and turned it into something different. And we got to start removing those things and get it back to what it is. It's, it's, it's an art form. It's an expression. You know what I mean? It's like it's, it's entertainment. It's like, hey, I'm really good at putting words together. I'm really good at making music. Can I come and perform this for y'all? Let's come out, have a good time. Let's come, to, let's gather together at the at the park, have a festival. Let's gather, let's gather at you know the arena. Let's whatever and have a good night. Everybody get home safe. That's what rapper, you know, get off safe. Everybody mm-hmm. get home safe. Well, it's like that's what it's supposed to be. Let's have a good time, and then everybody go their separate way. Like it's just we add we, and over the years, it's like we've added too many things into the the the, the pot into the culture. That have turned it into an entirely different thing, and it's become something. It's become a recipe for disaster. It's become deadly. It's become tragedy. It's become a lot of things other than what it's intended and what it was supposed to be from the jump. And we got to get back to that. We got to, you know, it's a lot of disrespect in the culture. It's a lot of egos. It's a lot of just negative energy. It's it's just it's a whole lot of things that we got to sit down and have these conversations about because I'm telling you, we're gonna wake up one day. And it's going to become something where it's like, bro, this is something, and I think it's we're already at that point. This is something beyond, beyond trauma. This is something beyond, like, there are a lot of people that are never going to be the same after losing takeoff. Yeah. Oh, never. Uh, Quavo specifically. Like, take and it from my, somebody my that God. has lost a brother to gun violence. I know what it does to the family. I know what it does. It's never, life is never the same. You never trust people the way you should. You look at everybody differently. You become cold hearted. You become numb to a lot of things. And we're not supposed to be walking around like that. So we got to get to, we got to get to somewhere where we all sit down and come together. And, you know, I know it's easier said than done, but it has to happen. I mean, that was, it has that was to happen. question of, of how does that happen? Not that I would have accountability or or even expect anyone to have that answer. It, 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 it comes need from to accountability. Happen. People got to understand what they're doing and say, you know what? I'm not doing that no more. I'm, I'm done with that. I'm not walking around with that energy. I'm not approaching dudes in my coach. I'm not approaching dudes that look like me with this energy. I'm not approaching, you know, I'm not putting the bullshit into the game. Like I'm done with that because I'm telling you, bro, this is something that is supposed to be beautiful. It's supposed to be fun. It's supposed to be a great time. You know, these dudes are making more money than, you know, some people will ever see in their lifetime taking care of their families and, you know, traveling the world and, 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 you know, experience, experiencing different cultures and art and things like that. And, and then you 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 die before thirty, like that's it's not insane. that's not a bro. That's not you, that's not what this 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 hip hop this this culture is intended to be. That's not what this is, man. We've we've gotten so far away from what this was supposed to be and what this is. And again, you know, waking up and losing losing our 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 kings and you know the guys that we 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 support and we love and we we celebrate losing them like this. This is a this is this is tragic, man. Do you think, uh, and again, this isn't just takeoff specific, um, but but to the check-in point, do you think there is a positive way to go about that and change? I believe, I don't know if it was Uncle Luke. I forgot who it was that had said, hey, everyone can't just come to Miami and just go to our clubs, fuck with the women, make money and not help the community at the same time. It wasn't a check-in like, mm-hmm. yo, you won't get robbed type of shit, but it was a, no, I'm hey, if you're, if you're going to come make money, enjoy you know, give the, the, the resources of this beautiful city give something back. Yeah, I'm, I'm not I, I mad think at some that. requirements because I, yeah, I, I think a lot of that, that would do well if the community watched a lot of. And this is not takeoff specific because I don't think that has yeah. anything to do with what happened. Yeah. But um, I don't know if maybe that's a solution where that things change as far as what you do in those cities when you come and perform and make money there. Mm-hmm. As, as far as giving back, I'm not mad at giving back. I'm not mad at that. I'm not mad at you know. 
artists coming to a city and, and giving back. Because that's a nice check-in. That's different than extortion. No, yeah. That's what <laughs> I'm saying. That's not a lot, paying for a protection. Lot of people, a lot of people can't afford, sometimes people can't afford to come to the garden and see you. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I'm not mad at artists finding a way to give back. But even in that, let it just change the energy. Like, don't, you know, it ain't got to be your check-in. Mm. It's like, because now, you know, as a man, you take offense to that and now you on defense. Now, of course, everybody's on edge. You know, my homeboy, he got a gun. He got his hand on the gun. He got it. And it's like already the energy has turned into something different. Right. And that's we that's, already at something different already. Before I even get to the city, the energy is completely different almost, now. Mm -hmm. And even with that, like, yeah, you could change the entire structure of everything. You have to account for impulse. Mm. You could have everyone put the greatest structure ever in every single city, with every single artist, every single person in the community. You still have to factor in somebody being drunk, somebody being upset, somebody already having trauma from something else that mm -hmm. triggers them to even want to be more uh, in the moment with that impulse. Because mm -hmm. I, again, just from the videos we've seen, I know nothing that happened here. A lot of that looked like impulse to me. Happen just like that. You don't really have time to think about shit. It's, so you could put every... That's why I also really have nothing good or profound or things to change here. Because I just watched a situation where it looked like a bunch of people just had crazy impulse. I don't know how you, I don't know how you change that. And again, you know, to just to go off what you're saying, we only just saw that video. We don't know For what sure. led up to that. For sure. We don't know how that night went. Mm -hmm. We don't know what happened prior to that right. clip we saw. Yeah, um, of course not. And, and, and a lot of this conversation, I... It's not all takeoff specific. No, it's no, just, no, just everything that's, that's it's, been it's, happening. It's just, like, entire, it's just a culmination of just waking up to news that we lost another yeah. artist that we, we we love and we support and that, you know, we listen to and we champion. And that's that's the thing here. Like we keep this. It's like, like you said, it's a cycle. And how does the cycle end? We have to do something because it seems like for whatever reason, every time we end up here, it's the same I said, I don't know how many months ago, maybe a year and a half ago, two years ago, this ain't going to be the last. Yeah. This is not going to be the last one. Yeah. We're going to be right back to it. And that's what I'm saying. I, the fact that I say that and I know that it's true, it won't be the last, is a problem. Mm -hmm. This is a problem. We should be able to stop this immediately because we have the control. We yeah. got to take accountability. I love my, I'm, I love my, I love my culture. I'm from the streets. I grew up in one of the most dangerous hoods uptown. I've seen shit from a young age that, which is why it deterred me. And I said, "Bro, if that's the end result, I'm cool." Uh, no, nah, I'm not playing that game because you just know, like, I know how that goes, bro. I'm not trying to be that. So it's like now we have to look at hip hop that way. Like, I'm not going to deal with that because I know how that ends. Like, that's insane, bro. Like. That is insane. Like, it should not be that way, man. And, you know, again, it, it, I I know, unfortunately, the pain of losing a family member to gun violence. So, you know, our deepest prayers and condolences to the family, uh, close friends. Um, Do you guys mind if I add something on real quick? Of yeah. course. There's this thing that's been way too normalized outside of just sadly rappers dying almost monthly. That's part of the culture, but it's within social media. And that's people just constantly sharing the violence. Mm -hmm. And I mean that in the sense of like the actual visuals. Yeah. The photos. Mm -hmm. the, the, the videos. That's of um, the bodies. Okay. Of, Again, I think that that's a result of people becoming numb to it. I think that's a result of people becoming like, this is a normal yeah. thing. I feel like this is what I'm supposed to do when this happens. Yeah. Because yeah. this is what happens when this happens. I feel like people don't understand how much that really fucks with their subconscious, though. Oh, like, absolutely. That, that really, like, seeing visuals, that's, I mean, gracefully, I didn't see that at six in the morning. I saw the news at six in the morning, mm. but not an hour, not till like an hour later, that came up on my feed immediately. That's not something I should be seeing at seven. We're not supposed to see that. It, it literally, and we don't, we don't understand the imagery and how imagery changes us and it affects us. We don't understand that, but it does. Seeing a lifeless body like that. Yeah. Seeing somebody bleeding out like that, you know, seeing a uh, grown men breaking down, crying, screaming that those things, those images you can't erase from your mental. Yep. Like once you see it, you can't unsee it. And then now, like I said, you walk around and you look at people differently because you see how, 
you know, people will act if your body is laying there. Like you're gonna just record me bleeding out. Yeah. So That's now I'm looking nuts. at people it's, like yo, you wouldn't even you wouldn't insane. even try. Uh, your first thought would be to record my lifeless body. So now my family will see my lifeless body and see me dying. You would you you are you one of those people that would actually do that? So you're just now your energy with people becomes different. You know what I mean? And and it's like and it changes you because now you become cold and standoffish. And you don't even want let people close to you, and you don't want to let. And then that trickles into you know intimate relationships with women and things like that. And you become cold to certain just like love because you're like man get out you don't really like i see how people act when you know i i know what you'll probably do if this happens we don't understand how that changes us and that affects us mentally and that's why i'm saying it's it's at a dangerous dangerous point now because again this is becoming it's scary that this is becoming normal i mean what what i don't know how much we'll ever be able to change the timeline quote unquote as far as like people sharing that Cause that's just a, a different monster, right? I think it's sicker when these platforms, these large, large platforms, not only share the video, but when you click the link, it was a Geico ad before. Mm-hmm. It was a Geico ad when I had clicked, not not even knowing video of him passing away, just just clicking like, oh, takeoff has passed away. I clicked the link. The first thing that popped up was a Geico ad mm. to then, which I exited out immediately once I saw, I couldn't even, I just saw legs. I was like, All right, I can't watch this. And I'm not I'm better than nobody. It's my, just my own personal gut and what I can take. I'm right. not on a moral high ground of anyone else. Same, yeah. But I could not get out of my head that I, had, I waited 25 seconds and watched a Geico ad before I watched a dead body. <laughs> and see, and this goes like, to... I, I'm never... Like, those fucking Twitter accounts with no Avi sharing that shit, I don't think there's ever going to be a solution. Yeah, that, that's the that internet. Gonna that's going to exist that. for fucking right. ever. This isn't even a, a shot at Geico, because I'm sure Geico just told that site, hey, we're going to give you some money. We want to... Yeah, and that eyes. Geico ad yeah. just happened to end up... Like, you're... Mon- yeah, like, it's really being that. monetized. Somebody <laughs> like, controls it's insane. That. And you know what's crazy? I don't know if I sound like a hypocrite right now, because we're talking about a death and we're monetizing right now. It, again. There's going to be an ad on this YouTube shit and I don't know how to feel. Right. That's why I'm not on a, a better or higher moral high ground than anyone. I'm somebody that's really trying to figure this shit out and starting to realize that anytime this shit happens, it's going to get the biggest clicks and I'm going to make some money. Mm. It makes me not even want to fucking talk about this shit. Right. But then you're wrong. Like, I almost was sitting there like, I don't want to talk. After that Geico ad, that shit sat with me for two days. Mm -hmm. I was like, damn. I was was thinking about calling you and being like, how would we look if we didn't talk about Takeoff? Because because I make money off this podcast. Yeah. The fuck? This... And even, even of course, we all agree. Like, it's sick that all these platforms keep posting this shit. I feel like that's become a new way to get views, too. Mm. It's starting to be like, yo, everyone stop sharing the shit. Now you look like the cool fucking moral person. Right. Yeah. But I, listen, I'm being a hypocrite right now. We'll make money off this shit. Mm-hmm. I just don't know how much longer I can like take it. It's um But that's the world goes around that way, I guess. Yeah. I'm not gonna stop watching the news. Right. <laughs> Do I blame the news? I, I don't know. Everyone has, I feel like on the internet has taken the stand, even though they're hypocrites. I'm telling you guys now, I don't know. Yeah, it feels I, that, fucked up the more it happens to me. And that and that was, you know, I'm glad you said that because that is something that I thought about. Like I didn't want to talk about it. I didn't want to um, you know, seem like a it was the thing to do to just jump on it and know that people would want to listen and hear. But again, man, it's and you know, I just I I I just I'm I'm just trying to put the word out yeah. to our listeners and our supporters like we have to do something in our communities. We have to take accountability. We control everything. We control it. If we remove these egos and change these frequencies that we walk around with, change how we just talk to each other, change how we just treat each other, it has to start somewhere. And, and, and I'm just offering what I believe is just my just good heart. Like, yo, bro, we have to change something because this this has gone way, way further than I think anybody has anticipated um 
and again, it's like you said, you know, now you're monetizing off of showing a lifeless body, you know, or 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 talking about a lifeless body mm -hmm. or paying respects to a lifeless body. And, and I mean, I just don't, I, again, you know what I, mean? I, I, I don't have all the answers. I'm not the smartest man in the world. I, I see I know both I sides. I feel things. Right. I, 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 I do see both sides. I'm not one of those people that anytime someone passes and they even do like the flashback clip and all that where I'm like, fuck you. I do think some people legitimately just do that for absolutely. monetization. Of course. Like, yeah, they absolutely. really take advantage of that. But I mean, you, you did make me feel better how you started this pod and everything you were talking about. And obviously coming from experience of losing a loved one that way. I just, the whole day before y'all came here, I was like, what can I tell the listeners that they don't, one, already know, and there's going to be no one listening to me and my report of this or my point of view that's going to stop what they were about to do or look at shit different. Like, oh, if the Rory told me that, so maybe gun violence should stop. Like, I just know that that's not true. So I felt like I couldn't even take the grounds of, well, I'm just trying to say positive things now for the listeners. I think they're the, not going to look at me and be like, well, we're not going to have any gun violence because Rory said it. Like, I, I think you're just an, you're one you're one more voice, you know, and I think you're an important voice as long as, as well as you all. Both of you are vo very important voices. And to hear these important voices, you know, take a second to acknowledge the wrong that went on and the reality. Both. And I guess even the, the hypocrite, the, the hypocritical yeah. like moments. Mm -hmm. it, it, it normalizes the the fact that like we could talk about this, look into it, and move on for the better. Mm -hmm. But okay, I feel you. That sounds good, Mo. How many of these conversations have we had? Too many. <laughs> too many. <laughs> Has Count, anything I, fucking I, changed? Too many. And this is what I'm saying. I, <laughs> I I've said it two years ago that it wasn't going to be the last when we were talking about whoever passed away at that moment. I said this is not going to be the last. And it's unfortunate, but it's it's real and it's honest. And here we are two two years later, and I'm saying it again. This won't, unfortunately, tragically, this will not be the last time that we wake up to this type of news. And again, man, something has to change, man. I we have I, I I've seen the things that we've taken and have made change to. I've seen it. So I believe that we can take this problem of us waking up to this re this tragic reality of losing you know these these artists at such young ages from our from our from our communities from our inner cities from you know I'm I'm from New York but when I say our communities being from New York City and being from Atlanta I know how they live I we live the same in New York City I don't not from I'm not from Atlanta Georgia but I I can tell once I get there and I see I'm like oh yeah I know how this is I yeah. eight cousins in one house I know what that's about. You know, slept in a bed, one bed with your brother. I know what that's about. I'm not from the city, but we the same. So I, I, we have to, we, I, we can change this thing. I know we can. I know we can change this thing. I'm just, I just don't know if as many people care enough to change it, and that's the scary part. I don't know if it, 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 if it bothers and affects as many people as it did me. I never met I never met a lot of these dudes that we've lost. Never met them. But waking up and hearing that we lost them and how we lost them, it still affects me. It still hurt because I'm like, damn, like we from the same culture. You know what I'm saying? We from the same inner cities. We from the same upbringing. You know what I mean? Like, so it and, and I'm human. You know what I mean? I have emo. I have feelings. Like, I feel that. Especially, like I said, a lot of these kids are 28, 27, 26. I'm like, damn, I'm thinking about if that was me. Like, if my story ended at 28, it's crazy. I can only imagine. You know what I mean? It's just, uh, again, the family is what I think about because I know, unfortunately, what this feeling is. I've, I've been through it. I still go through it every day. I feel it. And moments like this, it just makes you relive it. And all I can do is offer prayers and condolences and healing and strength to the family because I know the road that's ahead. I know the emotions that lie ahead. I know the uncertainties that lie ahead. I know how you you just wake up after this and become a different person and don't even realize how it changed you. You know what I mean? Like you're like, damn, I don't even remember feeling like this. I don't even remember 
the last time I felt like this or I, I was really like, you know, happy and smiled and really trusted somebody. Like, I know how this is going to affect the family. And it's unfortunate because, you know, it's it, it won't be the last. And that's the problem. And something just has to, something has to change, man. Something, something has, because this is not how it's supposed to go. I don't, I'm, I'm not a believer that, yes, I know everything happens for a reason. I know things that, but I believe that we can change the reasons. I believe that we have that control and that power to change why these things happen and how these things happen and how it goes. Like, it's just, it's, this is not it. This is not it. And I hate, you know, I, I love my culture. I love my people. I love being from the inner city. I love being from the struggle. I love being from the ghetto. I love being from the hood. But, you know, we got to change our man. We got to change our mentality. We got to change our energy. We got to change the way we interact and deal with each other and the way we treat each other. It, 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 this shit has to change. I'm not sitting down waiting for some mythical person to come in and fix everything. Like, we have to fix this. We have to change this. We've changed a lot of other things. We've, you know, generated billions of dollars for other things. We need to make the change in ourselves and our communities so that we can walk around with a different energy, respect each other, love each other, embrace each other, help each other. You know, like this is, you know, this is just, this is sad, man. It's sad. And, and unfortunately, it won't be the last. Yeah. Pray, prayers to the so family. Prayers, prayers to prayers. take off. Uh, prayers to the family. Offset as well. Um, prayers to quality control. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's... P and P and K. It's gonna um, take. A, it's gonna take a while, man. It's gonna take. You know, so it's a lot of healing. I, I don't know where offset and uh, and take off were relationship wise. That you know everything is all it was fucking some rumors. Saying that at they the were end of the day. I, again, okay, that they were cool. Again, I, I don't know, and and it's it's not our business to begin with. Um, even how they the three of them handled that entire thing. We we all came on here and said we admired how quiet they were about it. Like, hey, two of us is going this way, yeah. They family. At the end of the day, they so, family and things happen with family. Um, but either way, they could have been on great terms. It, it's still a tragedy. It's, it's, it's still, still a tragedy. Crazy. And I know he's feeling it even more because, you know, they, they the three of them moved together everywhere. Mm -hmm. And obviously take off and, and Quavo had to do this this press run, which no matter what, whether your family or not, a press run will keep y'all together for a month straight seeing each other. Right. Mm. Um, and obviously we didn't see Offset with them there. So I, that last month of his life, it, it's unfortunate that that Offset wasn't around for that. So I, I'm sure as someone that has been at odds with a best friend when they passed, it's it's a really, really shitty feeling. Yeah, um, it, it's and I, that's I, unfortunate. I, that That's always I just, unfortunate. I, I know what that feels like. Yeah. Um, and it, it's not a good feeling at all. Like it really sucks. So life is fragile. Um, life is beautiful. So let's cherish it, man. Unless, you know, if you can, you know, put things, put the put the the, the frivolous bullshit to the side. Uh you know, get past whatever is 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 lingering. Have those conversations. And if, you know, you can't come to a point of respect and, you know, love, then, you know, sometimes you just have to leave it there and, and just hope that, you know, one day it 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 it, it mends itself. But um again, man, blessings to the family of Kirshnik, Kari Ball. Um prayers, healing, strength, guidance, love. Um yeah, and you know, from from my heart, just it just goes out to the family because again, I know, I know, I know what this pain is. And it's not easy. It's not gonna be easy. I'm not gonna sit here and say it is not gonna be easy. It's gonna hurt. It's gonna always hurt. Um but again, just pray. Pray and, and move forward as best you can. Um mourn cry, grieve, you know, do whatever it is that you have to do. But just always, you know, keep love in your heart and um and keep God first. Keep praying. And one day you'll look up and and say, Oh, I didn't cry today. You know what I mean? Like 
it life happens. It's it's funny like that with these things. You look up one day and be like, oh, I haven't cried in two days. And um, you know, it'll it it'll get better, but it's gonna hurt forever. It's gonna hurt forever. So peace, love, and light um to the family and to take off. Thank you. Thank you for coming our way. Thank you for sharing your art with us. Um, grateful to have your words and your voice and your music forever. And um, rest peacefully, man. Rest peacefully.